Well, hello everyone. My name is Ryan Manook. I'm a solution consultant here at FileMaker, and I'm really excited to be your host for today's Transform Your Service Business webinar designed for those of you new to the FileMaker platform. In the next 60 minutes, we're going to show you how custom apps can solve your business challenges, improve your team's performance, and satisfy your customers. But before we get started, let's cover a few brief housekeeping notes. So for the best experience, it is strongly recommended that you participate in this webinar with at least a broadband connection. So if you have any problems or require online assistance at any time, please contact Citrix Technical Support at 888-259-8414. Now throughout today's presentation, you're going to have the opportunity to type in and ask questions. So let's talk briefly about how to do that. Go to the control panel, click on the question section, enter your question and click on send. Now we'll try to answer as many as time allows at the end of our presentation, but remember, you don't need to wait until then to submit a question. And with that, I'd like to introduce you to Richard Carlton from RC Consulting. Hey, Ryan, thanks for uh, having us here today. Hello, everyone, this is Richard Carlton. Uh, just a real quick background of who I am and why it may, maybe matters to you. Uh, I've been doing the FileMaker business, this uh, work for many years now. And I've helped hundreds, literally hundreds of small, medium businesses build out custom applications. Um, I've been certified in all versions of FileMaker for quite some time. And uh, I have a team of about 30 people that works with me both in California and Texas and really all around the world. And we do custom work for uh, businesses everywhere. I'm also a leading video trainer. So if you're interested in learning more about FileMaker and you're interested in an inexpensive FileMaker video course, you can visit learningfilemaker.com. So getting going today, this presentation is all about service businesses. Um, these are the people who have organizations where a portion of the team is out in the field. You're talking about businesses like on-site events, trade shows, management, landscaping services, HVAC, uh, contracting with electricians, plumbers, food and beverage services out in the field. And today we're talking about a specific narrow vertical, which is uh, automobile uh, collision repair. Now, all these organizations have the same type of challenges that they run into. Um, they're always scheduling their teams out in the field. They're always performing on-site work out in the field. And of course, then there's the quoting and estimating part of that process, as well as then once the work is complete, the invoicing and the collecting of funds. Now with on-site or service-based businesses, there are kind of the standard challenges that we run into. And that is, uh, you know, you see these in discrete groups, which is inefficient or uh, broken uh, ad hoc processes where you have different people in the organization who have the same job, but they're doing it totally differently. They're kind of winging it as they go. Um, you've been in organizations before where you've seen a uh, person one with a spreadsheet and they take the printout and they key it into the computer. And then maybe they hand the spreadsheet to someone else and they key it into a different system. And maybe the third person prints it out and takes it out in the field and uses it as a checkbox. And there's some real risk with doing data entry with spreadsheets um, and, and rekeying the information over and over. LinkedIn, which is a giant company, uh, did a survey with their records management group, and they found that 67% of corporate data loss was tied directly to user errors and blunders, data entry errors. And that's 30 times more menacing than a virus for causing data loss. So there are some real consequences with, you know, kind of an ad hoc inefficient process, especially when there's additional data entry that's unneeded in there. Not to mention your staff generally hate it, right? Um, there's also the issue of scattered data. And this is where uh, someone in the organization has the information in their head, someone else has it on their iPad and they're running around out in the field and someone else has some information you need, it's on their laptop. And then they went on vacation and took it with them, right? Which becomes problematic. So um, the information that your business needs is never where you need it, when you need it, that kind of thing. And so the goal is that you're just trying to get the job done as quickly as possible. Now, the Paperless Project is a, another group that did a big survey, and they found that four weeks a year were spent by managers simply looking for mislabeled, misfiled, or missing information. So that's like taking a whole month out of the calendar, just ripping it out and throwing it away, which is a huge uh, productivity loss. In fact, if you're watching this webinar, there's a good chance that you already sense this and you feel this in your organization. You feel that something's wrong. 
And that's what we want to address today and help you with. The last thing, of course, that we see that's very common is this concept of rigid technology. Uh, rigid technology is very much one where uh, someone says, hey, there's an app for that. So you go into the app store and you find a 99 cent app that manages your customers. And you find another app that maybe does quoting or invoices. And the apps don't talk to each other. And so you have these little islands of information that are floating. And then, of course, the other thing is that you could find an application that's overly complex and you have to kind of learn this application. And it's more than your team wants to deal with. It's one of those things they say, oh, it's got a hundred features, but we only need these 10 features and the rest of these buttons we don't need. So you've seen that before. And that is the organization trying to fix the inefficiency and the scattered information, but they end up getting into a rigid app that's not tuned for their needs. And so that brings up the idea of having a custom application tuned for your business. This is a huge, huge concept and it's very important. And for those of you out there who are listening, there's a bunch of people on this webinar. Some of you already have FileMaker apps that are solving critical needs in your organizations. And we're gonna be talking about that today specifically. So what is a custom app? <clears throat> An app, as you can see, is just a, a custom piece of software that's tuned for your business challenge but it also works on all the platforms that users are likely to need. So it's going to work on your Mac computers, your Windows computers. It's going to work on iPhones and iPads and even a bunch of random Droid devices. It works on everything. And that's what a custom app would be great um, if it works on everything and it's tuned specifically for your business need. So how does that help you? Well, the first thing, and it's the top bullet point here, is that it gets all your data into one place. It gets the data into a single application that's writing on the server, on a server in your office if you want, a server up in the cloud. It's very easy to do that, it's very inexpensive, and that gets all your data in one place. And so what kind of data? Well, customer data, inventory data, uh, follow-ups and managements, and quoting and invoicing, all these things that you do in your organization already. And so that's what a custom app helps us bring these things together and gets everyone collaborating, moving, the same way. So what we wanna do is talk today about Bumperman. Bumperman Incorporated is a, I would say a field services or mobile services company, and they actually repair bumpers on vehicles. They go to car dealerships and they fix these. So they'll go into a car dealership where they're renting vehicles, uh, maybe like a rental agency or something like that. And um, they are uh, to go in there and basically do a repair of a parking lot or a lot of cars that need servicing. And so Bumperman has a hundred thereabouts field service reps. In fact, they are having a huge conference this week and they're onboarding more people. And so they have this back office team that does the accounting, the billing, they run the corporate financial part of the operation. And then you have the service reps that are all over uh, North America repairing bumpers. And of course the back office folks are, you know, collecting money and handling that part of it because the field service people don't wanna really deal with the money unless it's going into their pocket, but in general, that's the uh, corporate function. So the typical business process for these guys is one where they visit the auto dealer. So the field service rep goes to the auto dealer and they kind of patrol the, um, they patrol the parking lot or the, the lot looking for vehicles that are damaged. And as they do that, they write, they start to write it up on their iPad. They take an iPad with them. They start to put it in an estimate on an iPad in line items in the iPad. Once they've collected all the uh, cars that need to be repaired or trucks or whatever, they go to the auto manager. And that manager is going to provide a signature of the repair or the approval for the estimate. Now, along the way, they can also take photos, which is really slick. So they take photos of the vehicles. It's documented in writing. It's documented in a picture. At step two, they get a signature approval. Step three, they perform the work either same day or they schedule it. And then when it's all said and done, the customer receives an invoice for the repair. So that's kind of the process for this thing. Um, it's fairly straightforward and you would think this would be easy, but it can get kind of out of hand real fast. Now, the CEO of this organization is Brandon Webb. We're gonna talk to Brandon here shortly. I think we've got him on the line. And uh, basically this is Brandon, uh, before he came to us, they were using these devices and talk about rigid technology. This is a Garmin uh, Trimble um, device and it's, you can see the buttons on the screen. This is what they used to use and run around with. And so if you needed to customize this, it wasn't customizable. The buttons are physical buttons on the device. Instead of we put buttons on the iPad screen. So if you don't like the button or it doesn't, you know, the custom app, 
we changed the button to meet your needs, right? Uh, so this Garmin device was very rigid and they determined that they, the team, the field team would spend about 45 minutes to an hour each day wrestling with this device, you know, putting the information in to get it quoted. Not to mention there's no photos of anything, um, but at 45 minutes to an hour each day for a hundred people every day. So you start to see that there's some serious pain points with the organization. And then the sync, there was a sync with this device. They go back to the uh, home office or their home and they would try to sync this. And sometimes the sync would work, sometimes it wouldn't. And the sync was so painful that the field teams didn't want to do it. So part of a custom app is to remove friction points. I can't overemphasize that enough. A custom app is to remove friction points in your organization. A friction point prevented these folks from syncing every day. So they'd only sync like in the middle of the month or at the end of the month, basically kind of when they wanted to be paid or when there was a deadline. And so you got into a situation where um, the invoices, uh, the accounting team would be in the back office, you know, staring at the ceiling with nothing to do. And then at the end of the month, they have a huge pile of invoices they have to process. What was even more worse than that is that you'd randomly have checks that would show up in the organization um, and the accounting people wouldn't know what the check was for because it was for a service that was on a device that hadn't been synced yet. And so, you know, as a, as a person in the field myself, I think, hey, the accounting people can deal with it. They get a check that is figured out later. Accounting people hate that. They really do. They want it when the money comes in, they want to know where it's attached to, what invoice it belongs to, who gets credit for it. And that way they can process it. They, they hate a stack of unknown checks. And that's, so this was a custom application to resolve all these issues. And so what if we could build a custom app that gave back the 45 to 60 minutes every day, right? And what if we could uh, have that organization recoup its costs almost immediately? Well, to start this going, first they realized they had a problem and they visited a local Apple store. In fact, the owners of the organization visit an Apple store because they use iPhones, and they trusted Apple, and they find out that FileMaker is actually kind of Apple. Now, I'm a consultant, I don't work for FileMaker, so I can say things like, you know, really from a lot of people's perspectives, they think of FileMaker as being Apple. FileMaker is a wholly owned subsidiary of Apple, but that gives you some, uh, some confidence knowing that the company is not gonna go away tomorrow. It's been around for what, last year was 30 years, I think, for the company. And every year they're upgrading the product and making it better. And so the customer had a little bit of experience using FileMaker. One of their secretaries used it for a mailing list. It was pretty minimal, but they didn't realize it was A, a serious product and B, it had the backing of the world's largest tech company. And so then the third thing the Apple Store recommended is that they wanted to fast track the whole thing to get it going, to get it going quickly, to make a big splash in the organization. So they said, hire a consultant. There are approximately 50,000 consultants worldwide in the FileMaker platform that are ready to help you if you need the help. Now, while I say that I have a great team and I'm happy to take your work, there are local consultants everywhere in the world that are there to help you if you need the help. So custom app for the reps. This is what we have. We have mobile service reps with iPads and they are streamlining the process for estimate collection and then getting it approved and then getting it submitted. The back office team uses FileMaker Pro to manage the invoicing process and to collect the funds. And this is an important bullet point here as well. Completed invoices are pushed to accounting to systems like QuickBooks or Sage. Sage is a, uh, another product. Um, and in the case of Bumperman, they use Sage, but a lot of businesses use QuickBooks. So this is one of those situations where people say, well, why don't you use FileMaker for accounting? Well, you use FileMaker to build a custom app where no other custom app is available to fit your needs, right? And so uh, accounting packages already exist. And, you know, there's only so many ways you can do accounting. If you get too creative with accounting, you end up going to jail. That's not good. So using QuickBooks or an off-the-shelf off package like Sage is the way to go. FileMaker can communicate with these uh, systems and push uh, billing and invoicing information into these systems. So that way it prevents the data entry we talked about before where you type in and, and data, ent data entry gets messed up. So, um, and then of course we have nearly simultaneous uh, data collection and syncing on the server. So everyone's on the same page. So as estimates were created and as inv invoices were created at these auto dealerships, they saw this information back in Texas at the corporate office almost immediately. So structurally, this is kind of what it looks like. This is FileMaker server at the top. This FileMaker server can be in your office if you have an IT team or it can be up in the cloud where you park it. 
like in an Amazon data center where it's you know reliably protected and it's available anywhere with the right security codes. Then you have FileMaker Pro, which works on your Mac or Windows computer. And then you have FileMaker Go in the middle here, which works on your iPhone or iPads. And of course you have WebDirect, which basically allows connectivity with pretty much everything else, which largely would be Droid devices if you have those. Now this is what it starts to look like when you start to roll it out. You have FileMaker server, it's hanging out once again up in the cloud or in your office. You have back office people here on the right side that are doing the accounting if you want or scheduling or whatever they need to do. And then you start to get remote users and the remote users can access it in the office if they're in the office or on the cloud uh, with an iPad. And then so that's the whole idea of where we start to go with this. So the data is in one place. I can't emphasize that enough. We're removing friction points and the data is protected and backed up in one location. When people log on to it, they're seeing the data, they're borrowing the data, but the data lives and is saved on the server. Does that make sense? So reps are more productive. They capture the pictures of the uh, of the uh, the bumpers that are damaged. They get signatures right on the iPads uh, from the managers to approve things. And then we can send out the estimates or invoices to the uh, auto dealerships via email, fax, a print, or even fax. And so we use the fax service with Bumper Man. So they had the option of sending out a printed copy to the fax machine. And so I say fax and some people go, hey, what's that? It's like old school. Well, yeah, but... Some days you have your foot in the new tech and some days you have your foot in the old tech because some businesses still use faxes. So I want to introduce Brandon Webb. Brandon, do we have Brandon anywhere on the call? Because he has quite the success story. Uh, Brandon, are you there? I'm here, Richard. Hey, so this is what I put together and, and, and my engineer worked with you to build this. And, you know, I was looking and I was blown away by the ROI on this. Can you just briefly tell us about your experience with this? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Richard, he covered a lot of the uh, a lot of the topics. Um, what made this a, a success? But let me just hit some of them briefly. Um, we had a very difficult uh, older generation um, handheld device, which he showed you earlier in the slide. Uh, what was difficult about it is that it was very difficult to make any changes to this. Um, if we had modifications, it would literally be sometimes months as as the requests were taken and sent overseas to India, changes were made. It would just it was it was very very painful having uh, having any type of um, updates made to the uh, to the software. So when I first met with uh, Garrett Depsky, who is a senior engineer for RCC, uh, I, I know he could feel the pain. He could hear it. Um, he knew we were skeptical uh, even about moving because it was a very difficult task for us to first go from manual invoices to this kind of older archaic um, electronic way of producing these invoices. But what he did uh, skillfully was extract all the good from the old system. We had a model in place that seemed to work pretty well and what I liked about RCC is they were able to listen not only to what we did but to what our goals were and we're able to put this program to, uh, together for us that almost out of the box was exactly what we wanted. And what I enjoyed uh, from day one is that I had support after the sale. And I mean support most of the time that same day. I recall in many instances I'd be talking to uh, RCC's engineer, Garrett Depsky, and I would describe to him something that we're interested in doing or something that might make this better. And he'd kind of listen to it through his engineering ears and say, well, what about this? And before I knew it, he'd already created the change and pushed it out to us. And I'm still on the phone call with him. So you got to remember, I'm, I'm waiting two months for changes in the past. And now I'm on the phone call with an engineer from RCC. And the changes are, are done. That's how, that's how impressed I, I am with this company. As uh, Richard mentioned, we basically... Um, had an archaic device and we wanted to move to something that would allow us to not only give them a better service, our franchisees, as you mentioned Bumper Man, we're a franchisor, we have a hundred, approximately 100 franchisees in the field and they were all um, invoices, old, you know, manual invoices, what they created in the past and you know then to this electronic system which was painful, mainly due to the fact they couldn't sync their invoices while they were in the field. They had to literally take this device home, that Trimble, that yellow Trimble device that you saw earlier, and they'd have to connect it to their PC, and they'd start the syncing process. Well, God forbid there was a, 
a problem with the telephone connection. Uh, very seldom did they get any feedback that the sync was successful or not. So we got a hundred guys calling after they try to sync to see if we truly got their invoices. Because it was painful, guys, we pay them uh, on semi-monthly, twice a month, on the 15th and the, and the end of the month. They'd be calling into us wondering if we got it and typically waiting until that 15th of the month and the end of the month to push all of those invoices. So I had an accounting staff here that basically were sitting on their hands most of the, of the pay period and then in one day they're busy as all get out because it wasn't spread out. The system that Garrett and RCC put in place allowed these folks to now sync after every invoice is completed. And the difference um, is we had, and this was, this was Garrett's idea, we had a painful syncing process in the old. And if we had a painful syncing process with the new, this would have failed right out of the box. Yep. Garrett recognized that, and he put in a full sync function and a quick sync function. And that quick sync function allows them to move the invoice directly to Bumperman uh, right after that invoice is completed. So that took away all, all issues that we had with them, with them syncing. So it, we found after we rolled this out that the 45 to 60 minutes a day, that was freed up by each fring, uh, franchisee. And that mainly was associated with the fact that they no longer had to print out the, the invoice when they were done because they're parked way in the back of the lots and they have to go back in and drop the, the, uh, the invoice off to the, to the manager. Um, and each franchisee now is, is getting 45 to 60 minutes more a day, which started to equate to one to three fixes more per franchisee. And if you do the math, if they're, if they're anywhere between 90 and $200 a fix, uh, times 100 franchisees, times 20 days a month uh, on t typical work day, uh, you know, working month, you can see uh, that's a lot of additional revenue, not only to Bumperman, but to those individual franchisees. Yeah, the other thing that helped us out, go, go ahead, Rich. No, I just said that's huge. I mean, because, in fact, these numbers I kind of cooked up, they're not your numbers. I was just going based upon, you know, minimum hourly rate, but the numbers actually might be north of this by quite a bit. So Yeah, they're pretty close. Uh, the other thing that Richard t uh, uh, touched on was every time the franchisees got to the auto dealerships, they would be writing down in a notebook everything that they needed to fix. Then they'd go see the manager. Then the manager would approve you know, some or all or most, whatever. Then they'd have to go back and enter all this data into their other handheld because of how slow it was. This is prior to the, the iPad, which is our platform of choice, the iPad mini, and uh, FileMaker developed by Richard Carlton's group. Um, so it was very manual. They were still taking everything down in the notepad, then re-entering it into their, into their uh, older device. Well, now they can use the iPad in this, in this solution as their notepad. Richard mentioned taking pictures. Now, but because they can take very, very good, clear, high-quality pictures, we found that their managers now at the dealerships are no longer getting up and having to go outside and walk the uh, lots with them. That added to this extra time that they're getting on a daily basis, and it, it, we also saw an increase because of that. The manager might say in the past, I don't recall there being a, a problem with that bumper. Bring up that, that uh, picture that's built right into that invoice, and it's approved immediately. So that, that also helped us uh, dramatically. Uh, dramatically. This is, uh, and the other thing. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, no, I just, oh, I, I just, I, for me, it's always amazing on the ROI with the sig the signature capture was, you know, they could the photo capture and then the signature capture as well. Those are those are new and they're synced immediately the same day, right? Synced right after that's complete. <clears throat> it's pushed right to us, so we've got we've got now a good a good flow of invoices coming in on a regular basis. And these invoices, they actually are dropping off at the uh, at the dealership. But it's synced back to us because we, we actually pay them twice monthly, but we also send that same dealership a statement. Now that's spread out for us across the month. The other yeah. thing this allowed us to do, and this was critical, is that I would say probably 90% of my franchisee now, or franchisees now are no longer printing. They're emailing and they're faxing. Even for dealerships that were used to getting a, a hard copy invoice, they also get emails. And we would say, well, can we email this to you? And, and if you need to print a hard copy, go ahead and print it right from your desk. And, and that was very acceptable. But what we also did, 
is how many people out there have handed an invoice to a manager and gotten a call from their accounts payable department when they get a statement because the manager has never given the accounts payable person the invoice. So they've never seen it. So we now add the accounts payable person as a, as a copy to on the email. They get it immediately. Nothing's changed internally. They hold it until the manager, they see the manager, the manager, right, they pay. But now that person has the, um, the actual copy of the invoice to pay off of, which is, which is cut down the amount of calls. The other thing that RCC did, by the way, is when we had a lot of calls from clients saying, I never got a copy of that invoice from my manager, they actually put on our website uh, an ability for that dealership now to, to go right to our website, log in under their customer number and uh, an invoice number, and pull up that invoice directly. It ties right into the FileMaker maker database that Garrett developed for us here. So that's cut down the amount of calls into, into uh, my home office tremendously because no longer do they have to talk to a person. They can literally get on the website and you show them once how to do it and they got it. And they know from that point forward that they can go and get any copy of the invoice that they need. Well, that's a heck of a testimony there, Brandon. We do appreciate you uh... Uh, calling us and letting us know about this. I, 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 every time I hear it from the customer, it's always more real because they're the ones that are saving every day with this. And like I said, it's, it's about FileMaker removing the friction points uh, for your organization. So what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and uh, do a demonstration here and show you the kinds of things that we're talking about. Now, normally in a presentation like this, I would, uh, you know, we would say, Hey, there's this demo software. This is Brandon software, but you can't have it because it's his. We're not doing that today. We're actually going to give you a uh, service business or field services uh, FileMaker file that's going to be free and unlocked. So as long as you have FileMaker, either a trial version of FileMaker or you already own FileMaker, you're going to be able to check out uh, this sample uh, starter solution and potentially use it uh, as your own project. So what I'm going to go do it, go ahead and do here is I'm going to exit out of my uh, keynote for the moment. And I'm going to dive over here and show you this real quick. And so what I have here is I've logged in. This is the starter solution. So this is a free, unlocked, uh, brand new starter solution that is available. And in fact, this one right here I've opened up is actually uh, running on a FileMaker server. And and what this has in it, it's, it's the ability for you to take this and run your customers and run your estimates and run your invoicing and run your products and it's in a lot of ways very similar to what was done from Bumperman, but it's generic and it's unlocked. And that means that you can take it and use it as a starter project for a custom app to fit your business. So this is a starter solution that is a place for you to start. So if it doesn't fit your needs, well, as a custom app, it probably should be off a little bit. You need to customize it to get, to, get it to fit your needs. And so what I want to show is I've also logged on with my iPad. It's here right next to me. And so... Uh, the, it's, the screens work great on uh, desktop screens or laptop screens. They also work great on tablets, and they also work great on phones. And so we've, we've set all this up. And so I'm over here with my hand on the my left hand, so I'm like left and right hand here. And we can take a look at our customers, for example. So I can look at Alex. Uh, did I get Alex? No, I got – oh, yeah, I did. I got Alex right here. And we can see that we have estimates um, for him, we also see that we have invoices for him at the top. And this is just sample data, of course, that you can uh, download and play with this and then clean it out when you're ready to start using it for yourself. Or if you're a FileMaker developer out there and you're here, you're watching this, you can use this to start your own projects for your customers. Um, it's totally ready to go for you. The navigation, of course, is consistent with the iOS. It's along the bottom. So if you look at the bottom of the screen down there, you can see that we have estimates and invoices. And so let's actually, you know, create a uh, new estimate. So I'm going to go to a customer, back to my customer here. I'm going to select this customer right here. And I'm going to say, let's uh, create a new invoice or create a new estimate. I do apologize. And so we, uh, I'm going to pick this device up and I'm going to sit here and click on it. So we have a, uh, a bumper to fix. So say we were going to fix a bumper, right? And then of course we added the ability to capture the image. And so we were going to capture an image and uh, let me see, I'm going to, we're going for broke here. So I'm going to get a picture of the broadcast engineers in the office here. And there's one of the broadcast engineers. And we're going to say use the photo. But say, for example, that was actually our uh, 
bumper that we're repairing. So we have that documented. So that's the inside look here at the broadcast studios here at FileMaker. But uh, but we have the bumper and we could add line items. We could put technical information. It's 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 damaged. I'm going to need this paint and this this kind of tools to fix it. And then you uh, go and you get the approval of the uh, manager. And the manager goes, okay, I approve this. This is great. Uh, get work on it. So then we have an estimate with an approval. Um, and meanwhile, that information is being reflected back in the back office here in FileMaker Pro. So really, I'm, you know, normally you would never run two copies on like this on your machine, but this is a demo. This is FileMaker Pro and Mac and Windows. And this is the iPad we see over here on the left. Now, once... Uh, we want to make this an estimate. We would just simply or make it an invoice. The estimate's approved. We do the work. We want to, uh, actually, we need a price on this. We're going to do a little work. In fact, we're going to say Ryan is $890, and then we're going to give him a 10% discount because he's feeling uh, generous today. And so um, this is, once again, all part of the Star Solution. If this doesn't fit your exact needs, then customize this to fit your needs, right? That's the whole idea. The, the idea is for you to take this and make it work for you. And so I, I click the button to generate invoice, and there's a little bit of a delay while it actually processes and it moves it over. And it did it on the server. So this is live for anyone who's logged into the server. It's already done it. Now, it looks similar, but this is a actual invoice at the top. You can see it says invoice 206. And we can, of course, change prices and add things here. Maybe, the, maybe your business process is that once it becomes invoice from estimates, you can't change it. So then you could lock it out if you wanted to. Um, I can change the status to being uh, work completed and it's good to go and it's today's date. And then uh, say that we're actually on site and the manager says, yeah, that, that was a great job. And I prove I'm not only I proved your estimate, but I'm now going to improve your, your invoice. Once again, this is if that's part of your business process is does your business process include photos, include signatures? If not, if, they, if it doesn't, then just remove these. But we've built them here for you. Then we also can track payment status, which is really handy. Now, this would be typically a back uh, office uh, process where they would say, oh, well, a check was received or a credit card received or wire transfer, whatever. So we can say check was received, today's date, and it's done. So that's kind of how this works. Um, it's really cool. And once again, the screens are mirrored. If I'm going to move this out of the way briefly right here, the screens are mirrored over here. And so we have the same kinds of screens, but we've tuned the screens to fit uh, the device. So on the iPhone, it's even more narrow. And on the uh, iPad, uh, it's a little bit wider. And then on the desktop, of course, it's the most flexible, largest screen you can get. Now, real quick, we come back over here. I should have shown this before I walked off. Is at the top is that once the invoice is completed, we can send it out via right in the software. We built this for you already. You can send it out via email. You can also print it. Now, for Bumperman, we included a fax option for them. And that's where I think I'm not, I have to check with my engineer and he's on the call here. But basically, we send it out as a service. We email the uh, PDF to a service, which then dials up the phone and transmits it. So it's invisible, but it's a third option here that says fax it. So if you don't want to uh, cut down a tree and load paper in a printer, then just send it digitally, right? Um, via email or then uh, the print job with a fax or print. So, um, that is some of the cool technology that's in here. Additionally, it does have some limited scheduling. Well, there's product management in here, obviously. And this is for both products and services. And so you could have a, you could have the bumper to repair. You could also have a service, um, if it was a service, like you know hourly labor for a repair. Um, and I think there's probably different grades of service. I think Brandon was indicating, depending upon what kind of work they were doing, there was different hourly rates involved. So you could add those and put them in uh, the invoice pretty easily. There's also a scheduling, uh, resource scheduling uh, tool in here that you can play with. And this is the idea where, you know, we have, uh, you, can, you can schedule equipment, you can schedule staff, you can uh, schedule materials or locations. And so we were building this uh, kind of sample data here. And so once again, you can play with this. Now, so if, if this is a star solution that helps you, then fantastic. Um, if you don't need all these modules in here, then you can remove some of these buttons and easily customize it to fit your needs. That's the whole point. Unlike that physical Trimble device um, where the buttons were hard, hardware in here, these buttons here are completely dynamic. We can change these. If you don't like the way this button looks here, it goes away. If you don't like these buttons here, we can change them or they move around or do something different. It can be utterly and totally customized to your organization. Once again, to remove the friction points and to make things uh, work 
work very well for you. Now, I know that some of you have been asking questions and we have got questions coming in and we're going to get close to uh, starting to answer some of those if you want. Let me uh, jump back to Keynote here real quick and uh, just pick this up real quick. So um, as a reminder that you can go to uh, filemaker.com forward slash service business. And this is kind of the whole website or mini site that FileMaker has that talks about this. It's also where you can uh, sign up and download this free trial. It's a trial that my team put together in cooperation with FileMaker. Um, and there are some videos that are associated with it. When you go to download it, you'll see all these videos that are there where we talk about it under the hood. Um, and those are free videos. If you want more uh, uh, specific training videos, those are inexpensive on our website, like $69, pretty inexpensive. So uh, free download. Uh, you're going to need to have a copy of FileMaker, uh, either Go on your mobile device or FileMaker Pro as a trial or a license for that. Also, the question comes up, can you import data in here? And you can very easily import Excel data out of Excel spreadsheets straight into a FileMaker uh, app. So that is very slick like that. Also, I want to mention that uh, we talked about the accounting component briefly. Um, there is third-party products. So people make third-party add-ons for FileMaker. One of the add-ons that comes with, that is available for FileMaker, it's a separate purchase, is a link that allows you to connect to QuickBooks. FMQBO is one such product. It's from Geis Interactive. So you go to geisinteractive.com or search for them online, and they will come up with a product that helps you sync with QuickBooks online. Um, and with the Sage integration we did, I think that was a little bit of custom uh, uh, programming. It was not very difficult to do, but you get into some areas where it's easy to customize FileMaker and then, but doing the accounting integration, you might want to get more help of an expert to, with, with that. Uh, it just depends on what you want to do and your timeline, which brings me to the next thing. FileMaker is releasing today. In fact, I'm looking at them and they're saying, yep, today is the day. We're releasing the new ebook about service business. And this ebook is fantastic. Um, it's really good, actually. I'm a very critical person when I look at things and I say, oh, is that good? And I can tell you after 26 years of doing FileMaker work, this PDF is really good. It helps walk through the mental gymnastics and the planning and the thought processes of, of creating a custom app. Do you want to do it yourself? Do you want to get some training? Do you want some coaching? Do you want to have it outsourced um, outsourced to a consultant to help you to speed things along, to get things done faster? All the thoughts about what are the processes that make your, your business special? Like Bumper Man, they had a special process for this, a secret formula. And, and there's probably some subtle things in there they do that's even secretive as well that, that you know, they wouldn't even share with me. But the point is that the, the app supports that. The app is customized to support their specific business operation. And this PDF drives into that in great detail. So once again, filemaker.com forward slash service business. And then we got to our Q&A section here. And I got Ryan here. He's the ace hitter here at FileMaker. He's here to help me in case I get questions that are too difficult. What do you got there, Ryan? Well, first of all, thanks, Richard. What a fantastic webinar. Really great customer story. I think it really demonstrates the power and flexibility of the FileMaker platform. So um, thanks to Brandon for jumping onto uh, this webinar as well. Again, if you haven't already answered your or asked a question, go to the GoToWebinar control panel, click on the question section, enter your question and click on send. Um, all right, to start off, uh, Richard, we have a few questions about the field services um, solution that you created. Again, that's a really fantastic solution. It's free to download. Um, to start off, was it built in uh, FileMaker 14? And if not, can it work with FileMaker 14? Uh, yeah, technically, I think we're uh, okay with using FileMaker 14 with that. Um, I, th I would encourage people that FileMaker is constantly providing new features in the product, and uh, I would recommend, some people are using 14 because they maybe can't upgrade for whatever reason, but I would recommend that, you know, even if you're using 14 or, you know, an older version, to keep your maintenance up to date so you get the latest releases. So when there's a security fix, which does happen once in a while with FileMaker, that you have the benefit of the new features and the security fixes. So staying up the up to date with your licensing is important. I know there's some people who have not upgraded yet to 15. They already have the license for 15, but they're kind of hanging out on 14. They'll be able to take advantage of this solution. That's fine. Um, I don't think, we haven't tested it with 13. It's going back a little too far, but 14 and 15 are both good with this. And But once again, I would just encourage you keeping your licenses up to date. So if something urgently does come out and you need to upgrade, you're already paid up and ready to go. Perfect. All right, the next question, you'd mentioned using FileMaker Pro Advanced and Server. 
is that required or can you run this on a FileMaker Pro, like on uh, like a MacBook Pro and uh, just an iPad? Yeah, this can run as a standalone, certainly. Um, so, I mean, if you're just like a one person shop, you can run it on your iPad or you can run it on your laptop. Um, I just want to emphasize that if you have a team, the real benefit to FileMaker is this whole concept of getting the data in one place on the FileMaker server, and it can be done fairly inexpensively and sharing that data. And the one thing the server does that backs up for you all the time, in fact, when we set our servers up, they back up every 15, 20 minutes automatically. So if something happens, we can roll back and get the backup, right? So it will run and standalone, it's not a problem. Um, but you just wanna think about if you have a team and how you're gonna share it with your team. Um, that's the frankly the real value proposition of FileMaker. Next question about uh, syncing. Is a network connection required? And if not, Will the solution automatically sync when I have a network connection? Yeah, so the sync, we were we were flipping coins whether the sync question would come up, and I guess it always does. So you can run, from the basics, when you start off with FileMaker, you can run it live online, and you can run it with iPad, and you have a connection there. Uh, in the case of uh, Bumperman, they were not guaranteed an internet connection. Um, they did buy the cellular uh, iPad option on the devices and with a minimal amount of uh, connection uh, data. But what they ended up doing is they run a local database and they use a third party product, uh, specifically 360 Works MirrorSync. And that is what allows them to press a button and then it syncs with the network. Once they get a network connection, either cellular or they you know, drive down the road you know, somewhere and they picks up a network. Uh, it doesn't, it, so it's an offline database copy of it that syncs. In fact, that is, we built in MirrorSync into the starter solution. Now, MirrorSync is a third-party product, so if you need offline syncing, you're gonna have to invest a couple bucks and get the uh, syncing. But as you can see from uh, Brandon, I mean, they had a 100-seat license, a FileMaker. They had a consultant that came in, which we spent, you know, whatever it was, it was like twenty or $30,000. And, and we built this custom thing for them. Um, you're getting a starter solution that helps jumpstart this and save a lot of money. But we built we 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 built the system for them. They made the money back somewhere between 30 and 60 days. And after that, it was free money that they wouldn't have got otherwise. And I and everyone was laughing. I said free money, but it's true. If they hadn't have upgraded and they were still using those old devices, they would not be getting that extra 90 to 100 thousand in gross billables per month. And you figure out whatever their profit margin is on that and whatnot, how long does it take you to pay off uh, a small investment, right? And if, if you're a technical person or, or a, a power user that really likes Excel or something like that, you can get into FileMaker and do this yourself. It's doable. A little bit of training and you can get going and customizing the app to fit your needs. So sync is an option. It depends if you have an internet connection. If you're going to go down that road, I recommend you talk to the folks at 360 Works uh, about the Mirror Sync product. Perfect. Uh, a few questions about the Bumperman uh, solution. And Brandon, if you're online, uh, we have a question for you as well. And Garrett, maybe you can help with this. Um, first one, uh, how many hours did it uh, take to uh, create that solution? Well, the exact number of hours is, uh, well, you can you can figure out that from scratch, it was about, they think they said about $25,000 in labor on the consultant's time. That's because they didn't want to learn it. One of the options of getting into FileMaker and building a custom app is you can do it yourself with some training and some coaching. They wanted to jumpstart this and get right to the end. And you can see financially, it made sense. Instead of them uh, struggling and learning it over the course of six months or a year, they brought an expert. And like I said, there's 50,000 FileMaker consultants worldwide, and there's probably one near you that's available to help you if you need this. Um, that being said, there was an investment of the FileMaker license and the investment of the application, and that money was made back within 30 to 60 days. That's really fast, but we typically see people make it back within six months and definitely less than a year uh, organizationally. I mean, they FileMaker really helped. When people get it and they really use it, uh, if you tried to go and take it away from Brandon, I think he'd fight you for it. He really would. He would. They would not be happy. All right. Uh, the next question, uh, this is for Brandon. Um, did Bumperman have any issues with getting franchisees to purchase iPads with cellular or Wi-Fi and or laptops with connectivity for WebDirect or FileMaker Pro? Do we have Garrett there? Uh, I can I can take that. Okay. I don't know if Brandon. Um, go ahead, Brent, Garrett. I'm here. Richard, if you want. Uh so actually, Bumperman provides the iPads to the franchisees, um, and they uh, found a, I'm not sure what provider, but um, AT&T, uh, one of those, they have a, they actually provide the data as well for those devices. 
uh, they get it for like 10 or 15 bucks a month or something like that per device, so it's really cheap. Um, and what they, in order to keep that limited, what they do is they use a, um, a platform to lock down those iPads to just what they want the franchisees to use. So really FileMaker and uh, there's one or two other apps that they use, but those are well, the only thing that's available, so they can't you know, just jump into Safari and Google and play their Pokemon Go games or whatever, but um, that's, so to answer that question, the French, the Bumper Man provides those and the data service. Yeah. And the other part of that, I want to emphasize that is that they were very big. If you're a business owner, you don't want your employees sitting around leaning on the hood of the pickup truck, uh, watching YouTube videos. That's super unprofessional. And so they were able to restrict uh, restrict access to that. So just limit. So they provide the devices, but we also then restrict what the devices will do. And that was, that, that's another, you know, as a business manager, I could see that being very valuable. Um, so next question. All right. Um, when, uh, Richard, when would you say that, uh, someone out in the field should use FileMaker Go versus WebDirect? Um, I tend to prefer uh, FileMaker Go if at all, if it's a choice, I pick it first and foremost for starters that, the integration with the uh, capture, with the uh, with the with the camera and everything is much tighter with this device. Uh, there is no signature capture direct on WebDirect, so um, if you want signature and really tight integration, for example, if I click here on screen right now um, and I click in there, I get a choice. I can let's say I just uh, I don't like Ryan here. He's talking. I delete him. Um, I can actually program FileMaker, it's, instead of asking me for the menu, to go straight in and go right to the camera and skip this step, or go right in and, and get the signature. In fact, that's what it does down here. If I delete the signature and I click this, it's the same process, but I told it to skip the menu and go in and get the signature. That is not available on the Droid. It'd be nice if it was there, but the Droid, or not Droid, but the WebDirect works um, through a browser, and the browser has certain limitations. Go is a custom app that is tuned for the iOS. It takes advantage of, of, it has access to GPS. If you want to know the GPS location, FileMaker can get that for you. It can map it for you. It can get the signature direct. It can get the camera and video direct very easily. There is limited camera support and accessibility in WebDirect, but the signature capture is missing. And so I, if at all possible, go with Go first. Um, is this my personal choice? Perfect. Um, Within uh, the solution, can you restrict what the users can um, access? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, that came up with Bumper Man too. I asked him about this, and there's so many things with Bumper Man we couldn't cover it all. Uh, essentially, what you could do is uh, each of the franchisees um, they only see their records. So in the master system on the back end, um, if you're over here in FileMaker, this say this is the back end, you would see everything here. You see all the estimates, all the invoices, but the franchisee out in the field, it only synchronizes just their records. So they only see theirs. They don't see their, you know, not really a competitor, but the guy who's maybe, you know, if you're in, let's say, for example, Los Angeles, that's a big area. You might have people in different parts of town. You don't need them seeing each other's data and who they're visiting. So you can restrict that pretty easily. You can do it within FileMaker, within the security of within FileMaker, you can restrict it that way. Or with uh, MirrorSync or one of these sync products, you can say, hey, just show me only my records and don't bring everything else down, right? Makes sense? Yep. And um, is there a way to have the estimate expire in the solution? Yeah, sure. I mean, you can set a date in here automatically. I mean, when I create a, uh, a new, uh, I'm going to invoice here, but I go back to estimates. Uh, actually, I hit the button at the bottom. I see estimates. I can actually add a new estimate. Um, the system knows automatically that today is July 12th. And you can actually ha do a little bit of math and add, add a field here. It says expiration, right? And it's and in, all you do is you take the current date and you add a number to it. Whenever you do that in FileMaker, those are days. So if you say today's date plus 30, that's 30 days in the future. It's pretty easy to set that up and, and do that, frankly. Perfect. All right. Uh, I think that's all the time we have for q and I believe we have uh, some uh, additional slides to cover before we uh, call it a day. Um, if you're interested in learning more about the uh, mobile service uh, resources, go to FileMaker's website for slash service businesses. If you're ready to talk about uh, licensing, we'd love to chat with you and uh, validate some of your uh, questions. Uh, give us a call at 1-800-725-2747. Again, huge thanks to Richard Carlton from RC Consulting uh, for this fantastic presentation. You can get in contact with him at uh, richard.carlton at rcconsulting.com. And there's additional webinars that you can view on uh, FileMaker's uh, webpage, forward slash learning, forward slash webinars, a ton of free content 
there as well. Well, I think that does it for today. I appreciate everyone allowing us in. I appreciate our broadcast engineer, Eric Frazier, and Mr. Ryan Manuk here. And that's for all of us here at FileMaker. We'll see you next time.